Hey guys, let's take a look at the care plan for hyperthyroidism. So in this lesson, we'll briefly take a look at the pathophysiology and etiology of hyperthyroidism. We'll also take a look at subjective and objective data, as well as nursing interventions and rationales. Okay, so hyperthyroidism is the overproduction of the hormone thyroxine by the thyroid gland. So thyroxine speeds up the body's metabolism, causing sudden weight loss and can result in a fast or irregular heart rate. Inflammation and edema can result in exophthalmus or that bulging or protrusion of the eyes. Treatment includes medications and or surgery to remove all or part of the thyroid gland. The symptoms of hyperthyroidism are similar to other health problems and may go undetected for some time. The most common cause of hyperthyroidism is Graves' disease, which is an autoimmune disease where the body makes an antibody, TSI, that stimulates the thyroid gland to produce too much thyroid hormone or TSH. Causes include being somewhat hereditary or running in families, but also a goiter or inflammation of the thyroid gland that causes it to produce excess TSH. A less common cause is excessive intake or medications that contain iodine. The desired outcome is going to be to maintain adequate cardiac output, decrease fatigue, and maintain optimal skin integrity. So let's take a look at some of the subjective and objective data that your patient with hyperthyroidism may present with. Now remember, subjective data, these are going to be things that are based on your patient's opinions or feelings like increased appetite, nervousness, nausea, changes in menstrual patterns, increased sensitivity to heat, fatigue, difficulty sleeping, sudden weight loss, and more frequent bowel movements. Objective or measurable data may include an enlarged thyroid gland or goiter, tachycardia, vomiting, diarrhea, sweating, tremors, thinning skin, fine or brittle hair, and a low TSH level with elevated free T4 level. Okay, let's look, take a look at some of the nursing interventions when caring for a patient with hyperthyroidism. Monitor vital signs, including orthostatic BP assessment and pulse and heart rate during sleep. Orthostatic hypotension can occur as a result of increased metabolism and excessive peripheral vasodilation. And assessing the pulse during sleep can give a more accurate measure of tachycardia. Perform a 12 lead EKG and monitor the patient for tachycardia as this can indicate stimulation by the thyroid hormone and result in dysrhythmias. It's important to assess your patient's respiratory status and auscultate the lungs for adventitious breath sounds and be sure to take note of any history of asthma. Signs of pulmonary edema can indicate early cardiac involvement and a history of asthma can affect the treatment meaning no beta blockers. So guys, this is because beta cells are found in lung tissue and the use of these can cause airways to constrict. While this is not likely, it still is a risk, so it is best to avoid beta blockers in a patient with asthma. Also, the exophthalmus or those protruding eyes, this is a hallmark sign of hyperthyroidism and often results in dry eyes 
and the risk of damage to the corneas. So encourage dark sunglasses and isotonic eye drops for lubrication. Monitor daily food intake and daily weights in your patient. Even though your patient may have increased metabolism and food intake, weight is still often lost. Continued weight loss with therapy can indicate ineffective treatment. Teach your patient to avoid foods that cause loose stools and peristalsis as increased metabolism also increases intestinal motility, which can lead to diarrhea and impairment of nutrient absorption. The patient should incorporate extra calories, protein, carbohydrates, and vitamins into six small meals throughout the day, and even possibly consult with a dietitian. Finally, Surgical intervention to remove part or all of the thyroid may be necessary in cases where the patient is unable to tolerate antithyroid medications or if the cause is a toxic nodule on the thyroid. Surgery is the quickest cure for hyperthyroidism with a relatively quick recovery period. Here is a look at the completed care plan for hyperthyroidism. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.